Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone. Uh, arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy or dysplasia is a genetic disorder of the heart and it is uh, after hokum is the second cause of the death in a, among young and athletic uh, people and the uh, incidence is one to per thousand to five thousand cases. The hallmark uh, lesion of the ACM is replacement of the ventricular myocardium by fibrofatty tissue. Uh, during last uh, decade, our knowledge about this disorder has been improved a lot. And so the previous data only it involved right side, but all the data cases and research show that it uh, most of the time it involved both ventricles I mean, is by ventricular, but some cases can only involve right side that they called it right ventricle arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, and sometimes is only left side involved that is left arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy. But generally, we use the uh, uh, the uh, the term of the arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy or dysplasia. The mechanism is mutation in the desmosome gene that is, it can involve many different uh, genes. In each case, different genes can be found, uh, and the pattern of the transporting the genetic is can be uh, usually is autosomal dominant, but in many cases it can be uh, recessive. So the spectral penetration and a presentation of the gene can be completely uh, different in each patient. So it's not constantly. Some cases they have gene and mutation, but without any progress in some patient now suddenly uh, present with fulminant future of the disease. The most uh, uh, pathognomonic uh, growth uh, feature of finding in other clinical finding uh, in the echo is uh, segmental wall motion abnormality uh, means it, that can be uh, dyskinesia, akinesia, or most of the time in the fulminant and classic pattern is aneurysmal. That this pattern of the segmental wall motion abnormality is specific characteristic of this disease is we called it uh, triangle of dysplasia that usually is at the base of the free wall right ventricular free will at the apex and RVOT but any of different variant different shape and size can uh, be expected even in the left side another not uncommon finding in this uh, case especially in those a classic feature is hyper echo and prominent moderator band. The clinical, uh, the most common clinical uh, manifestation of this uh, disease is uh, ventricular arrhythmia and its equivalent, like that uh, palpitation, syncopal episode, and especially uh, most of the time after exercise and cardiac arrest. But if depending of the how much uh, involvement of the myocardium uh, uh, we have, it can uh, little by little get right ventricular enlargement and the systolic dysfunction too, beside of the left side if it's involved. Sometimes uh, this uh, cardiomyopathy represent an acute myocarditis, exactly a classic uh, presentation of the myocarditis, like chest pain, ST and T changes, and increasing uh, cardiac enzyme level. Another finding in this uh, group of the cardiomyopathy is electric, uh, EKG abnormality. There are variants and different spectrum changes in EKG, but one of the uh, good or, or characteristic feature of the arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy is epsilon uh, wave. 
that it represents as a spike positive uh, right after QS at the beginning of the ST on the precordial right side means V1 but it's not specific and sensitive. Whenever we see such abnormality, we have to correspond with other findings, uh, especially echocardiography and M uh, CMR. The first uh, uh, approach and diagnostic uh, tools is echocardiography, that depending on what stage of the disease, we can have uh, those finding, including segmental wall motion, abnormality, and right ventricular enlargement, systolic dysfunction, and all those related to the uh, disease. But the most important finding and uh, diagnostic tools, besides of the echo, after echo, is CMR. And in CMR, we can see late uh, gadolinium enhancement in those segment has involved with the white or bright uh, pattern at the level of the involvement. For example, as you can see here, free wall of the left ventricle, and you can see as a white band at this level, or here, short axis, you can see this uh, late gadolinium enhancement. The pattern of involvement of myocardium and finding those fibrofatty tissue is that start from the epicardial layer and in, uh, progress to the myocardium. And that is a specific uh, pattern and uh, pathogenesis of the uh, arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy. Here is a good uh, approach a pattern that recommend by Dr. Corrado and his colleague whenever we have any suspicious finding that uh, about the IH motion cardiomyopathy how we can approach uh, those patients. Here is the rest of it you can pause it and study by yourself. From their last uh, recommendation of ITF International Task Force on 2010 that has been done many criteria. Dr. Corrado and his colleague uh, in the University of Padua on 2020, they revised uh, their recommendation and it's, uh, they give more detail and criteria including genetic finding and family history they add on and revise it, uh, this criteria and it increased sensitivity and accuracy of the diagnosis, especially in those cases at the early stage or family related disease. You can pause it and study by yourself. Here is the rest of it. For management of this uh, group of patients, the most important is prevention from the uh, ventricular arrhythmia that can be done based on the case uh, and patient, it can be by anti-arrhythmia drug like the beta blocker or can be by ablation, catheter ablation or most important is ICD. Uh, fortunately, during last years, uh, they have been improved a lot in gene therapy and some new medicine that hopefully in a few, few years or decade, we can have much better treatment for this type of the cardiomyopathy. Up to the next time. Have a wonderful time.